Praise the Lord and good morning to everyone. I am so grateful this morning that God has allowed us once again to be able to connect through Facebook Live. And I am delighted to have the privilege of presenting to you another presentation of Cross Nation Ministries located here in the city of Buffalo, New York, the city of good neighbors. And so I am excited that you have taken the time out of your schedule to join with me. And I trust that God will bless you today in a very special way. And I trust that all of the things that you've been asking God for, He will bring those things to pass. But not only we look to God to give us things, but we want to give God thanks and we want to give God praise so that God will hear from us how grateful we are and how thankful we are to have Him as our Lord and Savior and most of all our Heavenly Father who watches over us day and night, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, 366 days a leap year. Our God is faithful. Praise the name of our God. So I am delighted that you are with me today. I ask that you would perhaps contact somebody to join us uh, this morning uh, on this time of sharing on Cross Nation Ministries. God has been gracious to uh, this ministry. God has blessed this ministry over and over again. And God has sustained this ministry even through these challenging times. And I want to thank God for those of you who have been so faithful uh, logging in every Sunday morning and every Wednesday at noon and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And I am delighted that I have the privilege of serving uh, the people of God by serving the Word of God uh, as I receive it from Him. I know beyond the shadow of a doubt, our God is good. He is gracious. He is kind and He is just. And it is His will that His people are blessed at all times. Remember what Jesus said. He said, the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But he said, I come, that they might have life and that more abundantly. So you can rest assured, your God enjoys blessing you because that's what he promised. That's what he said he will do. And if you are honest, you cannot but say you are blessed. And you are blessed not because you deserve it or I deserve it, but because God is good and God is merciful and kind. And look how faithful he has been through in this pandemic that we're in. Praise the name of the Lord. The world is filled with all kinds of emotions these days, but God has given us the ability to be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord because we know that our labor is not in vain. So I thank God this morning for what He has done and what He is doing. So I'm going to ask you to prepare yourself now that we go before God in prayer. Our God is a prayer answering God. Our God is always listening to the cry of His children, to the voice of their children. And those of you know, praise the name of our God, that there is a special sound that only a parent can give to children that when they're in need, and a parent respond to the need of their children, whatever those needs may be. And 
that parent will try within his or her ability to meet that need. Guess what? Our Heavenly Father, praise the name of our God. He watches over us day and night. Praise the name of our God. Listening to what we may have to say to him. And if it's a request, if it's a petition, he said, make your request known unto God. So this morning, I'm going to ask you, uh, in the name of Jesus to Christ, to bring to the surface of your mind, right now, in your memory, whatever you desire God to do for you today, do today, I want you to believe him. Uh, because God hears and God answers prayer. There's nothing goes by him that he is not aware of. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to thank God for each one of you. And I thank God for your faithfulness. I thank God for the prayers that you've been praying for this ministry. Prayer, prayers you've been praying for one another. And how you're connecting with one another. I hear, praise the name of the Lord God, I thank for you have been. And I want you to know I am grateful. Uh, Cross Nation family, friends of this family, you are a special people because your God is special and he chose you in him before the foundation of the world. And I want you to know that I am grateful as well. So let us keep on being the kind of sons and daughters that God has chosen us to be. And let us be our best. Let us try to please our God in everything that we do, that he will be honored, he will be exalted, and he will be glorified and magnified. And guess what? The devil will be horrified, and you will be blessed beyond measure because that's what he desires to do. And I thank each one of you that have been praying for my granddaughter, Zoe. She's home now. And I thank God for how he interceded and blessed her. And there are many of you that have prayer requests. And God has responded to your prayer requests and your need. And I thank God. So right now, in the name of Jesus, the Christ, let your faith come to the surface now and believe God. Father, in the name of of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Father, we pause at this time to give you thanks and give you praise, O God, because of your faithfulness watching over us, leading us, guiding us, protecting us, providing for us, making ways for us, healing those of us who are sick in body, healing our loved ones, and Father, we just give you all the praise because you are a faithful God. You're a God who hears and answers prayer. And we give you the glory. We give you the honor, O oh God, because you are worthy. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for choosing us in you before the foundation of the world, bringing us to you, Lord God, and allowing us to be your sons and daughters, adapting us into your family, O oh God, allowing us to be able to call you Abba, Father, Daddy God. We love you this morning and we praise you and we glorify thy name. And Father, we thank you for the privilege of knowing, O oh God, that we are heirs of God, joint heir with Jesus Christ. What a privilege. What an honor, what a blessing that you have extended to us, your children. And Father, we acknowledge you this morning that you are the only wise God there is. You are in a class all by yourself. And there is no one, oh God, come near who you are. You have no equal, dear God. You are alone with all power with all knowledge. You're everywhere at the same time. And Father, you are present help in the time of need. In this morning, we thank you and we praise you from the depths of our heart. 
And Father, I thank you, Lord, how you have answered our prayers, how you have met our needs, how you have kept our bodies healed from all manner of disease. Now keep on blessing us, Lord, and we will keep on praising you and glorifying thy name. We love you with all of our hearts, our mind, our soul, and our spirit. So sit on the throne of our lives, Lord, and order our footsteps from one day to the next, because it's our desire to please you in everything that we do. This is our prayer. This is the desires of our hearts. And Father, I thank you for every one of your sons and daughters that have logged in on this morning. We ask you, Lord, to release into their lives everything that they need, O oh God. Bless, O oh God, and honor their prayer. We ask in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Come on now, say amen and amen again. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you so kindly this morning that we have another opportunity to join together. And just want you to be mindful uh, that uh, this is the last Sunday of the seventh month. This is uh, our exit out of the seventh month to enter into the eighth month, the month of August. And so I want you to keep in mind, praise the name of the Lord, that God is want to do, wants to do something for you very special at the close of the month and at the beginning of the month. Praise the name of the Lord. Keep in mind on first Saturdays, we have our prayer, our corporate prayer. We would do it on a conference call, our prayer time. So I want you to make a note of that. The first Saturday, praise the name of our God, we will have prayer in the morning at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. the first Saturday. So make a note of that so you can... Uh, call in on the uh, conference call prayer line. And also, the next Sunday is uh, the first Sunday of the new month. And that is going to be communion time, if you will. So let us prepare ourselves to be able to break bread together. Praise the name of our God on the first Sunday uh, in the name of the Lord. So prepare yourself that you will be able to participate in Holy Communion by having uh, the bread and the communion wine or grape juice set aside to participate. It is the act of remembrance that really matters. Jesus said, remember me, and we want to remember him. Why? because he's the source of our lives. He's the sustainer of our lives. He's the one who paid the ultimate price for our salvation, and he should be remembered. So keep that in mind for Saturday, 8 a.m., our prayer time. And on the first Sunday, we will break bread together in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I don't know about you, but I am so grateful for what God is doing, what God has done, and what God will continue to do in the lives of his children. So I thank God for you this morning uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want you now to prepare and let us see what God has to say to our hearts today. Now, we've been uh, speaking for the last few Sundays on the faithfulness of God. And today it is going to be part three. Part three of the faithfulness of God. And our foundational scripture is found in 2 Peter chapter three, if you will, 
verse 8 through verse number 11. That is 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 8 through verse number 11. I want us to look at it and let us read it together, if you would, in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord. And as I say, we're going to be talking about the faithfulness of God. And so, this morning is part three of the series of messages uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 3, verse number 8 reads, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Verse number 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which time the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And verse number 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Thus, in the reading of the Word of God this morning, would serve as our foundational scripture. If you notice in verse number 11, the word conversation is mentioned at the latter part of that verse. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? The word conversation really mean conduct, conduct, what kind of conduct we should have in the light of the graciousness and the faithfulness of God. So this morning, make note, we're going to be talking about the faithfulness of God, part three, the faithfulness of God. This is absolutely, positively important that we understand and act according to God's faithfulness. When we speak of the faithfulness of God, we really is talking about a God who is not slack concerning his promises as we read in the text this morning. He makes promises and he's able to keep his promises because he's God. If you remember last time we were together, I mentioned that everything God create is seasonal and when that which is seasonal, it is subject to change. But God is unchangeable. The scripture speaks about the immutability of God, which means the unchangeableness of God. And the only thing that is permanent, just to refresh your memory, the only thing that is permanent is God and his promises. God never change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he will be the same throughout the eons of eternity. You can trust him in time 
because he is not affected by time. He doesn't change. He is consistent. This is why it is so important to understand and realize that we serve a faithful God. And whatever he says, you can trust it. You can believe in it. You can rely on it. You can stand on it. You can put your full confidence in what God says because he is faithful. And he is faithful that promise. And all of his promises are yea and amen. Meaning God will not go back on his word. Some people may make promises, but a condition or circumstance can happen and that promise is not kept. But guess what? Regardless of what happens in our lives, if God has made you a promise, that circumstance, that condition, that difficult moment will not change what God says because nothing changes his word. His word is anchored in eternity and his word is synonymous with his character. His character he will not violate because he is God. And because he is God, he can be trusted. And this is what it is so important for us during this time in which we live, to know that we have an anchor and we can trust our Savior. We can trust our God because that's the kind of God we serve. Now, as you know, when I serve uh, as the minister or the teacher, I always try to share with you spiritual nuggets that you can make a note of, that you can further study, that you can research and allow God to speak to you even further. And uh, since we were together, and this is part three, uh, talking about the faithfulness of God, and I really have only given you <laughs> two points, if you will, to put in your note. Of course, there were other notes you could have made, but in the series itself, number one, just to refresh your memory, he is faithful that called us unto fel to the fellowship of his son. That's number one. He is faithful that called us unto the fellowship of his son. And that is recorded in 1 Corinthians 1 and 9. And I gave you number two, which is God is faithful to keep. God is faithful to keep. Whatever he said he's going to keep, he keeps. And he is not slack concerning his promises. And God is faithful to keep. That is 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Now, this morning, I want you to make a note of the third point. I want you to put in your notes so that you can remember. God is faithful. The faithfulness of God. Number three, the Lord is faithful to sanctify us holy. God is faithful to sanctify us holy. And the word holy in this context is spelled W-H-O-L-L-E-Y. W-H-O-L-L-E-Y, holy or complete. Number three, again, did you get it? The Lord is faithful to sanctify us wholly or completely. Praise the name of our God. And I want you to make a note of that. And the scripture that I want us to look at 
to corroborate this particular point, speaking of the faithfulness of God, is in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verse 23. That is 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verse 23. Notice the point again. The Lord is faithful to sanctify us holy. W-H-O-L-L-Y. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, look at it with me so you can see exactly what God is talking about in that verse as we talk about the faithfulness of God. God will keep his word. Notice what he says. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved Preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at it again. Did you see that? And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray. God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved, preserved, kept blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's a powerful verse, children of God, and I want us to look at it just for a few moments and spend a little time there. What God is saying here to you and me and to the body of Christ universal, that he is faithful. When we talk about the faithfulness of God, it is important to understand exactly what God is saying. And the third point is that the Lord is faithful to sanctify, set you apart, set you aside specifically for himself. Sanctify you wholly or completely. And he considering the entire person, the entire being, all of you, all of me all of the believer, not part of him or part of her, but all, completely. The God of peace is sanctifying us wholly, completely. Our spirit, our soul, and our body. It's important for each one of us to understand that we are not just body. Many times, the child of God shortchanged themselves by looking at just our bodies, and that becomes who we are. But that's not the truth. God has created each one of us a trichotomous being, which means a three-part being. A three-part being, that is spirit, soul, and body. Say that. Spirit, soul, and body. We are a spirit. We have a soul, but we live in a body. 
notice the first in order. The first in order is spirit. So we are a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. God created us this way. God created us in his image. God created us in his likeness. And God created us for his glory, for his honor. So therefore, the God of peace, because of his faithfulness, knowing that we were born messed up, born in sin, shapen in iniquity, through the faithfulness of God, he promised to sanctify us completely, completely, wholly, completely, our spirit, our soul, and our body. Now that is important. That is important, child of God, to know that our God has completely sanctified us. He does not deal with our spirit or just our soul or just our body. Although we tend to spend more time with our body than anything else, any other part of who we are. But guess what? Our spirit is the most important part of who we are because we are spirit. We are a spirit and have a soul and we live in a body. It's, this is important because it is important to understand how God has created us. Praise the name of the Lord and why it is important for us to understand this particular verse of Scripture. Here in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, the faithfulness of God has sanctified us wholly, completely. Our spirit, our soul, and our body. Praise the name of our God. To understand the purpose of the body, we must understand the purpose for man. Are you listening? When God created man, he created him a spirit. Being. He created him a spirit being with a physical house. That's his body. Then God placed him in the physical earth. Are you listening? God purposed an intent for him to rule and dominate the physical realm from the invisible realm through the agency of mankind. Are you listening? In essence, God desired to control the seen from the unseen. Through the unseen, living in the seen, on the scene. Try to follow me now. God desired to have his kingdom extended from heaven to earth by allowing his spirit to reign through man's spirit as man dominated the earth through his soul and manifest his nature through his body. Are you with me? Therefore, the triune nature, that's the trichotomous being again, the triune nature of man 
is designed for various reasons. His spirit, his soul, and his body. And in that God is faithful, it is important to understand how we are supposed to operate from God's vantage point. Make a note of this. Man's spirit relates to God. Are you there? Man's spirit relates to God. What does that mean? Man's spirit picks up the spirit world. Man's spirit picks up the spirit world. Are you listening? Man's soul relates to the mental realm. Man's soul, our soul, relates to the mental realm of our existence. What does that mean? The mental realm has to do with intelligence. Intelligence. Our soul. I just want to give you some basic. Now, man's body, our body, relates to the physical environment. Man's body relates to the physical environment. What does that mean? It picks up the earth. It picks up the earth. But guess what? You are a spirit being. I am a spirit being. Which relates to God. We also have a soul. Which relates to the mental realm. Or intelligence. But we live. We live. In a body. A physical body. And our physical body. Relates to the physical environment. Are you listening? Which speaks, picks up. The earth. Are you listening? I want you to make this point, and I don't want to belabor it. I want you to try to grasp it. Man's uh, original state in the Garden of Eden before the fall was one of a perfect union and fellowship with God. He was in perfect Union with God. Perfect. Perfect. And the ultimate goal of God is to restore that which was lost by Adam through God's faithfulness. So, man was designed to live from the inside out. From his spirit to his body. Are y'all listening? God designed man not to live from the outside in, but from the inside out. From his spirit to his body. Are you listening? God designed man, if you will, to be led by his spirit. This is why the Holy Spirit is so important. God is, he designed man to be led by his spirit. Praise the name of our God. And it's important to understand that. Not to be driven by his environment. Now, I want to make a point. Right now, we are in a pandemic. 
our environment has been tainted, not just only by this pandemic that we are in, but all of the effects of sin. And many times we find ourselves responding to our environment when we ought to be relating to God from our spirit so that we will not be overwhelmed by natural physical things, but we will get our direction from the spirit of God himself because we are supposed to be led by our spirit from the inside out. Are you listening? In other words, we are supposed to be led by our spirit because our spirit has been recreated by the Holy Spirit. And this is why God said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. All things are passed away and behold, all things becomes new. Are you listening? So the faithfulness of God has sanctified us wholly, completely. Our whole spirit, soul, and body. Because God wants us to act like him, be like him, serve like him, walk like him. Praise the name of our God. You see, God designed you and me. It was in his intent. Praise the name of our God. For us to be led through spiritual discernment. Spiritual discernment. Not our physical senses. Spiritual discernment from the inside out, not our physical senses. Praise the name of our God. Because our physical senses primarily has to do with the earth, natural things. Are you listening? You see, but when Adam fell in the garden, when Adam fell by disobeying God, what happened, his disobedience, it destroyed the fellowship of communion that he had with God. That fellowship was broken. Praise the name of our God. And when that fellowship was broken, guess what happened? Spiritual death sat in. When that perfect Fellowship was broken. Spiritual death set in. This is why each one of us was born spiritually dead. This is why it is so necessary for each one of us to experience the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Why? Is to renew that relationship and fellowship with God that was lost in the Garden of Eden. And this should let us know how powerful the work that Jesus performed on our behalf. That scripture that all of us can quote, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now from Genesis to Revelation, that was in God's intent for that which was lost to be restored. So through the faithfulness of God, God has given us a promise. 
And that promise is the number three that I gave you this morning. Is that the Lord is faithful to sanctify us wholly, completely. And uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23 again says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. My God, somebody need to give God a praise in here this morning. This is heavy stuff. It's good stuff. Praise the name of our God. Talking about the faithfulness of God. God is so faithful. Now keep in mind now, you are a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. And keep in mind, saints of God, as we close this morning, your spirit, your spirit is designed to relate to God. And in that we are a spirit being, we have a soul, and our soul is designed to relate to the mental realm, the mental realm of intelligence. And I may expand on that at some point. And our body, man's body, relates to the physical environment. We pick up the earth, praise the name of our God. And how do we do that? We do it through senses, our senses, our five senses, if you will. Praise the name of our God. Those are like little powers, if you will. The, the powers of sense uh, is that of sight and touch and hearing and smell and taste. It relates to the natural, the physical world. But God created you and me in his image. We are a spirit being. We have a soul. We live in a body. And our God is a faithful God because what he has done in his faithfulness, he has sanctified us holy and the very God of peace sanctify you holy and I pray God your whole spirit soul and body be preserved preserved protected kept Blameless, blameless, no charges, no condemnation unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I state my case that our God is faithful. God is faithful. Somebody need to give God praise this morning on the faithfulness of God. And you are not just somebody. You are really somebody special, chosen by God himself and sanctified by God himself, holy, completely. Your spirit, your soul, and your body will be kept blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of our God. This is why in our scripture, when we open in it, in verse number eight of 2 Peter 3, it says, but beloved, be not ignorant. Be not ignorant. Be not ignorant of the things of God. Be not ignorant how God operates. God is faithful. 
He is faithful. If he promised it, it's going to happen. And so therefore, you were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. And guess what? This morning, right where you are, you are the handiwork of God. God chose you. He ordained you to say, go and bring forth fruit and your fruit shall remain. So everything that God has given you to do and you have done to his praise and to his glory, that fruit remain and it will glorify God and will magnify him. Children of God, this morning I feel excited because I serve a God who is faithful and I know that you love the God that you serve. I love the God that is in you and I trust that you love the God that is in me because we serve the same God. I want you to shout with me, God is faithful. Say it again. God is faithful. Come on, you can do it one more time. God is faithful. That which he promised, he will do. And I pray that God will bless you and bless you over and over again. Guess what? That exactly what he's going to do because he is faithful. Thank God for you this morning, for joining me this morning on another presentation of Cross Nation Ministries located here in the city of Buffalo. So delighted that you have joined me and has been a part in the name of Jesus the Christ. I pray that you will continue to pray for this ministry, pray for the family and friends of this ministry, that God will use it to bless his people throughout the world. There are people that has tuned in to be with us throughout outside of New York State, praise the name of our God, in other states and other countries. And I'm so grateful that God is faithful. Praise the name of our God. And pray that God will use you. And saints of God, don't give up on God. Don't throw in the towel. Don't get weary. Hang in there and believe God and trust God. And God will continually showing his faithfulness to you. Thanks for joining me this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. And those of you, praise the name of the Lord, that have enjoyed this ministry, I want you to continue to be faithful in supporting this ministry through your prayers and through your gifts in the name of Jesus. And I want you to stay tuned Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, Elder Timothy Sanders has a word to share with you uh, this morning. Just how you can be a continual support of this ministry. And don't forget to join me next Sunday morning, same time at 10 a.m. in the morning and on Wednesday at 12 noon and at 7 p.m. Father God, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we thank you this morning for your faithfulness toward us. We thank you how you've sanctified us and how you have sanctified our whole spirit, soul, and body that will be kept blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you for every one of your sons, every one of your daughters, and every family that is represented on this service this morning on Facebook Live. Thank you, my God. And let your grace and mercy be multiplied in the hearts and the lives of your people. In Jesus' blessed name. And let the people of God shout, God is faithful. Say it again. God is faithful. God is faithful. The next person that you see today, greet them by saying, God is faithful. Have a blessed day today. May heaven smile upon you and give you perpetual peace in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our God. It is my pleasure 
sharing with you today. Keep on trusting God. Bless you. Heaven smile upon you and give you perpetual peace. In Jesus' name, let everyone shout, God is faithful. What a dynamic word that was given by our overseer, Apostle Robert L. Sanders Sr. Thank you for tuning in on today. We're here every Sunday at 10 a.m. and also on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for prayer and Bible study. And we want to say thank you to those that have been supporting us. But if you want an opportunity to give, you can give by three ways, either with the Giveify app or the Cash app, or you can simply drop off your gift here at 550 Genesee, Buffalo, New York, 14204. So we want you to have an awesome and excellent day and be blessed. We love you in Jesus' name.